Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic is Dental Pulp. So we finished our majority of the topics that is enamel, dentin and the periodontium which includes cementum, alveolar bone, periodontal ligament and gingiva. So the last topic is Dental Pulp in the tooth related uh, structures. So let's get into details of dental pulp which is a mesenchymal uh, connective tissue. So as I mentioned it is a soft mesenchymal connective tissue which occupies the pulp cavity in the central part of the tooth and it is a special organ because of the unique environment and which is surrounded by a rigid wall that is dentine which is unable to expand in response to injury as a part of inflammatory process that is why we are having severe pain when we uh, having uh, caries or when there is a infection in the pulp or the caries are invading pulp so the pulpal tissue is susceptible to change in pressure which affects the pain threshold and pulp is a simple connective tissue okay it is peripherally laid by uh, odontoblast because it is uh, outlined as dentine secondary dentine deposited gradually that is a aging process uh, which reduces the blood supply and making the tooth resistant to trauma and infection because it has defensive cell and in an oral cavity, we have 52 pulp organs, that is 32 of permanent teeth and 20 of primary teeth. And total volume will be 0.38 cc and the mean volume is 0 0.02. So each of these organs which takes the tooth which is uh, occurring within. So if it is a central incisor, it will be of the shape of central incisor. If it is molar, it will be of molars. So it takes the shape of the tooth which is present within. So the development uh, we have discussed in detail in our tooth bud uh, formation, tooth bud cap bell stage formation. So it starts from dental papilla at 8th week of intrauterine life. So there will be condensation of mason game under the enamel organ which is known as dental papilla. So this enamel organ enlarge and enclose the dental papilla in the central region. So dental papilla which controls the morphology and type of tooth to be formed. So there will be high vascularity and high proliferation of dental papilla which later develops into uh, pulp. So basically we have two types of pulp that is coronal pulp which is present in the um, crown portion and radicular pulp which is in the root portion. Okay. So coronal pulp is located within the crown of the tooth and radicular pulp is located within the root the coronal pulp it is occupying the pulp chamber of the crown of tooth in young teeth it resembles the shape of outer dentin so it has six regions like occlusal mesial distal buccal and lingual and there will be a floor of the pulp so pulp horns are projected into cusp so there will be a pulp horns which is projected into the cusp so this pulp constricts at the cervical uh, region where it continues as radicular pulp. So at this border where the coronal and radicular pulp meets there will be a constriction and it continues as radicular pulp. So whereas a radicular pulp which occupies the pulp canals and root of the tooth in the anterior tooth it is single and in posterior tooth it is multiple because it has multiple roots. So the radicular portion of the pulp is continuous with the periapical tissues with the apical foramen so there will be apical foramen here so it will be continuous to the periapical tissues through apical foramen okay so apical foramen will be here so it will be continuous with the periapical tissues so any infection is there which will be spread to periapical region so as age advances width of the radicular pulp will be reduced and so the apical foramen the apical foramen which is the pulp cavity terminates at root apex at a small 
uh, opening which is known as apical foramen so radicular pulp continues with connective tissue of periodontium with this foramen and diameter is 0.4 in maxilla and 0.3 mm in mandible so wide opening during uh, development of root which will be constricted once the dentin and cementin deposition happens so this opening sometimes uh, will be found on the lateral side of apex so sometimes it will be here lateral side so there may be two or three foramina split by cementum which is uh, known as apical delta okay so if you have more than one apical foramen split by cementum or dentin which is known as apical delta so accessory canals so it is uh, from the lateral side of radicular pulp into periodontal tissues not just the root tip so they are numerous in the apical third so it will be numerous in the apical third and formed due to the premature loss of hardwick's epithelial root sheath so you remember what is hardwick's epithelial root sheath which is a condensation of outer and inner enamel epithelium which helps in formation of root and which will be fragmented uh, and it will be become epithelial rest of molasses so that is accessory canals so now let's move on to the uh, important part that is the zones of pulp so histologically it has four zones that is odontoblast uh, cell free zone which is also known as uh, wheel zone cell rich zone and pulp proper so odontoblast layer which is this is odontoblast layer which is uh, near to the dentin or exactly we can say it is near to pre dentin okay which is the first form dentin and um, the cell bodies in the pulp and cell process in the dentinal tubules okay the cell bodies in the pulp and the process in the dentin whereas a cell free zone which is very important which is also known as wheel zone which is 40 micron uh, wide and relatively free of cell you cannot see any cells here here we have cells which is known as cell rich zone so cell free zone which is traversed by you can see the blood vessels uh, nerves and cytoplasmic process are going so there will be uh, nerves blood vessels and cytoplasmic process but there will not be any cells so as you can see this zone is below the odontoblastic layer okay now we have the cell rich zone which is present in the sub odontoblastic layer okay so the cell rich zone which has got uh, more proportions of fibroblast and undifferentiated mesenchymal cells which has macrophages dendritic cells lymphocytes which is formed due to the migration of cells from pulp proper so pulp proper is here and uh, mitosis is seen when dead odontoblasts are replaced and also contain young collagen fibers during early dentinogenesis whereas the pulp core which is the central region of pulp which contains major blood vessel and uh, the nerves of pulp which has pulp cells and fibroblast so the various cells of uh, pulp are odontoblast fibroblast and differentiated cells and defense cells the odontoblast are peripheral areas which is uh, seen in the peripheral areas of pulp where the odontoblast reside which is termed as odontogenic zone where it is producing dentin okay so uh, that is odontoblast which has large process extending into dentin the number of odontoblast corresponds to the number of dentinal tubules and the odontoblast in the crown region will be larger than uh, in the root areas and the shape of odontoblast also reflects the functional activity of the cell so there will be active phase and non active phase active phase cells show increase in ectoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus and secretory vesicles whereas a non active phase it will be condensed so it has a condensed cytoplasm with a decreased number of endoplasmic reticulum and we have uh next is functions of odontoblast which is nothing but synthesis of organic matrix collagenous substance like cellular protein phosphor protein and intracellular accumulation of calcium degradation of organic matter so next one is fibroblast which is in greater number in the pulp which is to form maintain the matrix that consists of collagen fibers and ground some uh, substances 
which is a st stellate shaped which is having uh, extensive processes and the next one is undifferentiated mesenchyme cells these makes mesenchymal cells which are distributed throughout the pulp so frequently around the perivascular area so they are polyhedral shape with peripheral process uh, we cannot differentiate from fibroblast so uh, they differentiate into odontoblast fibroblast or macrophages and the last one is defense cells we know the defense cells which are macrophages mast cell plasma cell lymphocyte neutrophil eosinophil and macrophages uh, this all these defense cells we have learned in um, pathology regarding the macrophage mast cell its appearance plasma cells lymphocyte and eosinophils so extracellular matrix we have connective tissue which has collagen elastin and fibronectin ground substances are proteoglycan glycosaminoglycans and other membranes so collagen fibers are the extracellular structural proteins which consists major part of connective tissue which is uh, these collagen fibers do not contribute to dentine matrix formation okay so after root completion mm, and pulp matures the bundles of collagen fibers increase in number so the uh, few types like type 1 uh, type 3 type 4 type 6 and type 5 elastic fibers are uh, which has ability to expand and uh, elastic fibers ability to expand and uh, contract like a rubber band that is why this name it got it got this elastic fibers are first formed in bundles of thin microfilaments called oxytalin fibers so all these we have covered in uh, periodontal ligament um, blood supply to uh, pulp is uh, very vital uh, which has uh, many arteries uh, running in our head and neck region like external carotid to superior inferior alveolar arteries so major arteries we know the arteries are dental branches mental branches incisive branches intraorbital artery posterior superior alveolar artery and also lymphatic drainage we have submaxillary gland submental gland and other cervical lymph nodes which are drains into superficial and deep cervical nodes nerve supply are like basically uh, trigeminal nerves supply the head and neck region the maxillary nerve and mandibular nerve it has anterior superior alveolar nerve infraorbital nerve posterior superior alveolar nerve and uh, lingual nerve and inferior alveolar nerve and in nerve fibers we have a peculiar appearance that is nerve plexus of rush uh, rushko which is now enters through the apical foramen as myelinated nerve fibers and they branch to form sub odontoblastic nerve plexus of rushko Resh uh, which is separated from the odontoblast by a cell free zone of uh, wheel so here it is having the nerve plexus of rushko which is entering through the apical foramen and it is branches out and it is present in the sub odontoblastic region between cell free zone and odontoblast so uh, next is uh, we have age changes age changes are uh, the size of pulp apical foramen cellular elements blood vessels which will be decreased as age goes and we have very important uh, session which is pulp calcification so we have localized calcification and diffuse calcification localized is known as pulp stone which could be true denticle and false denticle and also we can have diffuse calcification the true denticle that is a localized pulp stone which is rare and small in size which is found near the apical foramen which consists of irregular dentine and traces of dentinal tubules and few odontoblast and remnants of epithelial root sheath which invade the pulp tissue uh, causing the pulp to form irregular type of dentin which is uh, becoming pulp stone okay so it's a part of dentin so dentin is present within the pulp is known as true denticle which is irregular dentin and formed by the epithelial root sheath 
whereas a false tendin tentacles which are evidence of dystrophic calcification of pulp tissue which does not contain any dentinal tubules only true denticles has dentinal tubules so these false denticles are formed of degenerated cells or areas of hemorrhage which act as uh, a central focus of this calcification and overdoses of vitamin d may favor the formation of uh, these pulp stones so pulp stones are classified according to their location like free attached and embedded uh so free is it is free in the pulp attached to is attached to the dentin and embedded is which is embedded within the uh, dentinal walls and close proximity of pulp stone to blood vessels may cause atrophy of it and the second type is diffuse pulp calcification which is commonly occurs on the top of hyaline degeneration in the root canal are not common in pulp chamber they are irregular calcific deposition in the pulp tissue following the course of blood vessels okay and advancing age favors their development diffuse calcification and the pericytes uh, it is a very important short note pericyte which are actually capillary associated fibroblast okay which is suggested as progenitor cells for replacement of odontoblast so pericytes are uh, progenitor cells for replacement of odontoblast which are capillary associated fibroblast so pericytes which are around the endothelial lining and which is uh, basically involved in the production of odontoblast and uh, the last part is functions of pulp there are lots of function because it is a uh, blood uh, rich area which has nerves which has undifferentiated cells which is having different cells so there are lots of function mm, for pulp one is in so an inductive function so dental papilla induces the enamel organ formation and also determines the morphology of tooth the second one is formative function pulp organ produces dentin or endoblast develops organic matrix and function so that is a formative function reparative means the formation of highly mineralized reparative dentin at the site of injury so we have learned the types of dentin how the reparative dentin is formed so it is uh, the cells are coming from the pulp tissues so defensive would has a defensive cell we have seen the defensive cells of pulp macrophages histiocytes plasma cells all are involved in defensive action and protective any environmental irritant stimuli always elicit pain as a response that is a protective uh, function and nutritive the pulp vasculature it it is giving uh, nourishment to the odontoblast continuously and also to the secondary dentin so that's all about uh, pulp so dental pulp is a um, small chapter compared to our enamel uh, dentin and other periodontal ligament so we finished uh, oh, enamel dentin pulp and periodontium periodontium is having four sections that is two hard tissues which is cementum and alveolar bone and two soft tissues which is gingiva and periodontal ligament so next we have another topic in dental histology which uh, we'll, we will be dealing about um, the salivary glands so uh, to make sure that you learn the basics first then you go to the other chapters so the tooth formation uh, should be very thorough when you are uh, Uh, trying to learn the concept of um, other structures such as uh, enamel dentin pulp so because formation uh, and the other parts are interconnected so it is very easy when you learn the basics in detail so i'll come up with a new session at dentistry mo thank you